This is our $500 Civic. And we've already slammed about $10,000 worth of parts into it. But guess what? It's still slow as heck. So what are we gonna do about it? What are we gonna do about it, Joby? I think you know exactly what we're gonna do about it. We all seen this one before. That's right, Jimmy. This is the legendary K20A and was originally found in the DC5 Integra. It's an extremely capable four-cylinder engine that's capable of handling upwards of a thousand horsepower. The K20A produces 215 horsepower and has a red line of 8,600 RPMs from the factory. And since it was just sitting around collecting dust, we decided to throw it in this old thing and make this Civic a whole lot faster. Hopefully so fast it'll compete with a modern day Civic Type R. First, let's set a baseline. We need to take this Civic to the track as it is and see how slow it really is. Do you know what's better than having a personal chef? Having multiple chefs with today's sponsor, Cook Unity. Unlike other food subscriptions, Cook Unity delivers signature meals from award-winning chefs straight to your door. Each meal in your bag is meticulously handcrafted with fresh seasonal produce, prioritizing whole foods and supporting local suppliers. Cook Unity's diverse team of 50 plus chefs from across the country curates an ever-changing menu with hundreds of dishes catering to over seven dietary preferences, including vegan, paleo, and gluten-free options. Today, I'm having the grilled Asian hanger steak with charred broccolini made by chef Stacy Barang right here in Los Angeles. The best part is meals are delivered fully cooked, so all you gotta do is heat them up and if that wasn't easy enough, Cook Unity offers simple, flexible subscriptions so you can pause, skip, or cancel whenever you want. Go to cookunity.com slash donut or click the link below and use code donut50 to get 50% off your first order of Cook Unity meals. Thank you very much, Cook Unity. Now it's time to do some zero to 60 tests. <laughs> If that's true, that sucks. <laughs> okay, zero to 60 complete. Now it's time to get a lap time. Every piece of momentum counts. Yeah, it's very good in the corners. <laughs> Come on, you big. All right, Job, you just ran at 141.67. Blazing fast. Yeah, for reference, yeah. Jerry actually took the Civic Type R a few months ago out to Streets of Willow. He ran a 124.77. It's so only like 17 seconds. Job, 17 seconds is no joke, man. I know. It's a 1.6 mile course. That's a huge margin you gotta make up. But you know what? What? I'm gonna let you make a believer out of me, damn it. That's right, dude. He's coming around. Don't do it. Ah. Don't do it. Uh, oh, your hair touched it. Oh. <laughs> Clean up on aisle oil floor. So the first of many steps that are required when undergoing an engine swap of any kind is removing all the original stuff that you intend to replace. So that means out with the factory D15 and this now unnecessary engine bracket. This bracket was originally used to hold the D15 motor in place, and since we're replacing it, it's getting cut out. The only other thing we're gonna do is clean it up. Engine's out, new one's going back in. But before we do that, we gotta dress this thing up with all the parts that Hybrid Racing sent over to us. First new part unboxing here. Nice little fuel rail from Hybrid Racing. While Nolan's working on installing our new fuel system, I'm gonna remove the factory exhaust manifold and swap out our valve cover for this sick yellow one that we got powder coated a while back on an episode where we learned about powder coating. What do you think? Wow. Dude, it looks great. And so we're gonna be sticking with the stock six-speed transmission that came with this K20A. It's six-speed, it's got an LSD in it, it's gonna be great. But we are gonna upgrade the clutch for a little more holding power, a little more robustness, and it should feel real nice on the pedal. Engine, meet transmission. Transmission, meet engine. They are now one. All right, joining us for this swap is Brian Gillespie from Hasport. He's like an OG in the Honda world developed the kit to do this swap in the first place. Yeah, so I think we got the right guy for the job to help us on this. 
All right, so here's our old subframe. Here's our new one. At first glance, they don't seem that different, but it's very important that we remove our old one so we can install our power steering. Since our ultimate goal with our EG is to make it comparable, if not better, to a brand new Civic Type R, that means we do have to install some of the creature comforts and advancements of the Civic Type R into our car. With the more powerful K20 installed, that means we can put bigger tires on there. With this power steering, that's gonna make turning those wider tires even easier, plus with more power, that means more torque steer going through the front end, and this power steering is gonna help us navigate that a little better. All right, so the steering rack is attached to the subframe. This is our first step towards beating that FL5 Type R. All right, next up is one of my favorite parts of any engine swap, putting the header on. All right, so the advantages of this header right here is gonna be higher flow. The lengths of the headers themselves have been specifically engineered for this engine, so we're gonna make the most power where we need it. And also, the end diameter for our exhaust pipe is a lot bigger than the one that was on there too, which is further gonna improve flow and make the car sound a little better too. So I'm really excited to hear this thing fire up for the first time. I think we're gonna be some real obnoxious Honda boys with this thing. Somehow this crusty Civic that we bought for 500 bucks has become, unsurprisingly, one of my favorite cars here at Donut. One of the many moments of truth is upon us. It's time to put that K-Series in to this little old EG. The engine's ready, the car is ready, so it's time to do it. Welcome to your new home. Let's start dropping this car. All right, stop there, Nolan. Let's see, hang on a sec. Uh, yeah, and we are really close to this bracket. Can we lose this bracket? Yes. I'm really happy. I mean, this thing, is, this thing looks great. I think we're both believers. But, you know, seeing the engine in the engine bay, it's a big step. Okay, so for our cooling system, we're gonna be upgrading that to match our new K-Series engine. So we've got this hybrid racing radiator, and it is about almost triple the width of the stock one for some increased cooling capacity, and it looks pretty good too. We've obviously got the engine in the engine bay. It's a huge step, but there's a lot of stuff left to do to get it up and running. So we need to do things like install a fuel pump and the fuel lines. We also have power steering now. We get the shifter connected. We gotta do an intake. That's the majority of it. Oh, radiator fans. And in theory, once we do all that, this car will run and be ready to go to the dyno. These axles are pretty easy to install. You just gotta get the hub out of the way. So to do that, I've disconnected the lower ball joint here and the uh, lower suspension mount. So I slip the axle up one, swing the hub out, find your splines, and voila, axles in. So we got a three inch exhaust for this guy because Brian at Houseport is telling us that that's gonna make the best power. But with that, the flange is also three inches and far too large. So I need to oval out the holes so it'll fit on. All right, so flange is all cut up. The exhaust is kind of mocked up. So now I'm just gonna tack it in place and then pull it off and weld it all together. Looks half decent, probably won't come apart. So it's gonna go in for the last time, I hope. My buddy Mike Day also happened to be in town for a visit, so naturally, I put him straight to work. All right, so I have the new pump in the factory hanger here. So I'm gonna flip this back in, and we'll have all the fuel pressure and flow we need for the new swap. While Brian and Mike wrap up the odds and ends for the cooling and the intake, I'm inside the car getting the shifter situated. All right, so that wraps up the intake. We're pretty close to firing it up. All right, so one of the things I'm most excited about is this little bit of kit. It's our shifter from Hybrid Racing, and it's really sick. It's originally from an RSX, but they gave us an adapter plate that lets us put it in pretty much anything. So it's in place, we got the cables routed, we got all the hardware tightened down. Now we're just gonna tighten this down to set where the shifter actually sits and feel the first shift. Oh. That's real nice, and this thing is endlessly adjustable, so I can put the shift wherever I want, I can adjust the length of the throw. It's really a nice piece. Can't wait to rip. Okay, we gotta put the icing on the cake. <laughs> this nasty shift knob. Oh yeah, baby. Okay, I think we're gonna need to get a new shift knob, but that's pretty funny. Right now, Brian is marking off a spot on the hood that needs to be clearance to make room for our power steering. It's definitely worth the clearance that we're gonna have to make. Shouldn't be a big deal. Just gotta cut off some of the under frame of the hood, and then the hood will be able to close, which is good. Good job, Adam. All right, time to fill it up with some coolant. <laughs> oh, 
Okay, we've been at it for a while and most of the work is done. The engine is in, the transmission's in, everything's hooked up, it's got a shifter, it's got fluid, it's got electricity. So it's time, finally, to turn the key and see if this thing fires up. Everybody cross your fingers. Cross them toes. Please! First fire up. It's gonna be fine. Keys in. Fuel cycles. I'm excited to see what this thing does at the dyno. Unfortunately, I will not be going to the dyno because I have to film the podcast, which we shoot right in here. It's called Pass Gas. The Pass Gas is the number one automotive history podcast in the world. And would you look at this? We got some Pass Gas merchandise. We got the Wink Wink Nation shirt with a little Miata on it, and it's also available in poster form. We've also got a bunch of podcast adjacent stickers. And if you're not subscribed, check it out. You'll probably really like it. So uh, while they go to the dyno, we're gonna record and uh, I'll see you later. So we're at Unrivaled Tuning right now with our buddy Danny, and he's gonna put this thing on the dyno and get it all tuned in. And the tune is basically just maximizing the air fuel ratio. We're at just a tick over 200 horsepower, and we are so close to that 210, 215 that we want. So I think if it gets a little bit more aggressive with the time, We'll be there and do this thing's gonna be great. <laughs> there you have it. We hit 208 horsepower, 157 torque. I'll take that all day. That is right in between our guesses. I am super happy with that. The motor stayed intact. Danny and Unrivaled killed the tune. I won't be able to make it to the track, but Zach, have fun with it. We are back at Streets of Willow with the Civic, freshly K-swapped. It's got a whole new K20A. It's got a six-speed with a limited slip dip. It's got a sick shifter. Oh, baby. It's got power steering. And it's got probably about triple the horsepower it used to have. This feels like a whole new car. This thing screams like a banshee, the banshee of Inglewood. Oh my God. All right, it's time to see if all that money and all that effort was worth it. Is this thing gonna be any faster? I think so. So it's clear that the car is faster, but now it's time for the fun part. We're gonna run some laps here at Streets of Willow and see how much I can improve on our last time when the car had the original engine in it. And that time was a 141.6. I'm gonna take a few laps, get used to it. As long as it doesn't break, I don't wanna go jinxing anything. I'm already happy. This thing rips. I don't care that much about the time. That said, I care a lot about the time and I'm gonna push it. <laughs> While Job gets warmed up, once he crosses the start line, I'm gonna hit the start on this timer. I think we're gonna beat that Civic. I think so. Use all the track, Job. You got a 129.19. Wow. On your first hot lap out in this thing. Wow, so, that's great. Yeah. That's phenomenal. How'd it feel? It feels so good. Yeah. And it like, I mean, it's great. It just feels perfect. It runs good, revs forever, temps are sturdy. Nice. The only thing that I'm really like struggling with is now that it's so much faster, yeah. I'm all over the place. Yeah. Bracing real hard, having kind of a hard time operating a little bit. Yeah. But dude, it feels great. That's awesome, dude. All right, well, we got five seconds to uh, catch up with the Civic Type There's R. There's definitely a few seconds left in it. I think we'll so. see what I can do. Flying down the track, it's insane. It's gonna be faster than the last one. Come on, use all the track, Job. Woo 
<laughs> oh my God, this thing is fun. 128.45 that time. So took half a second off. I mean, good improvement. All right, so you took half a second off okay. on that last one. I think just watching you come onto the straight here, you're kind of choking up. You can yeah. use a lot more of the track. Yeah, maybe I need to go a little bit deeper into the skid pad. Yeah, yes, 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 yes. Um, I also think you can break a little later up here. Oh, I definitely could. Yeah, all right. <laughs> Okay, Nolan. <laughs> What's so, my fastest lap? 128.45 was your fastest lap. We're still five seconds off of the 23 Civic Type Bar. Uh, we'll get there though. I think the seats are probably holding you back a lot. Dude, you're really trying to brace yeah. yourself. And, so you're, you know, you're not focusing on driving. That's right. Yeah. So that's right. We gotta do that. Thank you so much for watching. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Throw some comments down in the comments to let us know what you want to see us do to this thing next. Yeah. But man, it's a fun car.